know uh, it's good to see you. Hope you're enjoying the fall weather. I could do without the rain, but hey, it's beautiful nonetheless. I didn't even know there was such thing as albino pumpkins, but I learned that this morning. On the, it's kind of neat. Unless somebody washed that with the white socks and bleached it. I don't know. But uh, it's good to see you. Good to be here on fifth Sunday. Um, again, this message, uh, one of those things where I think, why is this? I've been mulling over this for a, a week or two, and I thought, well, I might as well speak on it, because I think that's what I'm supposed to do. So um, we're going to be talking about a parable today, but I'm going to get right into it and uh, ask you a quick question. I think I probably know the answer to this, but have you ever witnessed someone get promoted that you knew did not deserve it? Everybody knows that person, Right? I've, uh, over the years, I've worked where I do for quite a long time, but I have seen that and I thought, wow. So bringing in your own little TV and your newspaper when you start your shift and gets you promoted around here. That's pretty cool. And I'm not kidding when I say that. Uh, but it's amazing. You know, we're, we're quick to judge and whatever, um, and uh, we, you know, it's we're, we're, we have that merit mindset that you you should get promoted based on your merit, based on your performance, and that's you know in the natural that's definitely a, a great idea. But we're going to see some something in a parable today, uh, where there's some people who uh, were quick to assess that certain people uh, didn't deserve something that they were getting, and uh, we're going to start with this parable in Matthew 20. I'm just going to I'm going to read this to you and then we're going to jump in on the screen behind me and we're going to uh continue going through this parable but let me start out with Matthew 20 uh verses 1 through 7 if you have a phone or bible or whatever you desire to read on you can fire that up Matthew 20 1 through 7 this is a parable about a landowner and um hiring some workers okay So, for the kingdom of heaven is like the landowner who went out early one morning to hire workers for his vineyard. He agreed to pay the normal daily wage and sent them out to work. At night, now he, the normal daily wage, a lot of translations will say it's called a denarius. Okay, that's just a normal daily wage. Okay, so he hired some workers, going to pay him for the day. This was normal back then. There was a marketplace kind of thing. Um, People were waiting there, daily hires, and uh, they were equipped with whatever they needed to be equipped with and were ready to be hired for the day. Uh, That was kind of a common thing in that culture. I've read here and there uh, some some things on that culture, but this was normal. And that, uh, you know, people who were there to offer different work, they could hire people right on the spot uh, who were willing to work. So that's what we're dealing with there. So at nine o'clock in the morning, Uh, He was passing through the marketplace and saw some people standing around doing nothing. So he hired them, telling them he would pay them whatever was right at the end of the day. So he he offered, hey, part of the day is left. I'm going to pay you what's right. Come work for me. So they went to work in the vineyard at noon. And again, at three o'clock, he did the same thing. So he offered them, said, hey, I will pay you. What's right? Come work for me. I, I need some work done. I believe he was just trying to get this harvest taken care of, and he needed some people, a lot of people, apparently. And so at 5 o'clock, now this is one hour, their, their day started at 6, ended at 6 a.m., ended at 6 p.m. So it's a little different from what we're, we're used to in the Western world. But So at 5 o'clock that afternoon, he was in town again. And he saw some more people standing around, and he asked them, why haven't you been working today? And they replied, because no one hired us. Uh, the landowner old, old, let me start that over. The landowner told them, then go out and join the others in my vineyard. So he hired some guys in the morning, first thing, said, I'll pay you a daily wage, which is normal. And then he went out at nine, and noon, and three, and then one more time, at five, where there was only really one hour left in the workday, and he hired these guys. Apparently, he had, like I said, 
a lot to get harvested, a lot of grapes to get harvested. We're going to pick up in Matthew 20, verse 8 uh, through 12. It says, That evening he told the foreman to call the workers in and pay them, beginning with the last workers first. And when those hired at five o'clock were paid, each received a full day's wage. Things might be starting to get awkward. Maybe. We're heading that direction. When those hired first came to get their pay, they assumed that they would receive more. Naturally, they were probably sitting there thinking, I mean, they're getting paid. He's paying these people in front of everybody. Everybody who was hired throughout the day. And they probably thought, holy moly, he just paid those guys that have been here for like an hour. And I thought, if he hired them at five o'clock, did they really work an hour? They might have got there. They had to walk. Who knows how far away that was. These first guys are probably thinking, we're going to be making some serious coin today. We're probably going to get double, triple. I mean, this guy is apparently good. So these thoughts are going through my head as I'm reading this. So they get paid. They assume they would receive more, which is normal based on uh, merit. But they too were paid a day's wage. This is where it got awkward, probably. And uh, this whole thing, this whole parable we're going to talk about is about grace, a picture and illustration of grace and God's goodness. And, and sometimes when grace throughout the scriptures, when grace shows up and grace is exposed, when it's revealed, I, it, things can get weird and awkward in, in the atmosphere. Like uh, I immediately think of the, the lady who was caught in the act of adultery. For one thing, that was probably awkward for her right, right off the bat. And then she was dragged in front of, uh, of Jesus. And then by the end of that, it got awkward for the religious people. So grace showed up and things got kind of different. It kind of arrest our thinking. So when they received their pay, these first guys, they protested to the owner. These people worked only one hour, and yet you've paid them just as much as you paid us who worked all day in the scorching heat. That seems normal. It seems legit that they would have this gripe, right? They're like, hey, this is totally not fair. And if, you know, you've, this message I've titled Unfair, if you have kids, or you had kids, or you're going to have kids, this is a very common word. I hear it a few times a day, right? But uh, you got to deal with it. And I just say, hey, life is unfair. And uh, don't go comparing yourselves to your friends because I'm not their parents. And uh, we're going to do what we want to do. So, but anyways, so these workers are, are really, really not happy. And they're not, they're not seeing things the way they should be. And this is probably kind of surprising, right? This is abnormal, if you will. Let's continue on in verse 13. It says, He answered one of them, Friend, I haven't been unfair. So the landowner, the, the foreman, is referring to them as friend. And they're probably thinking, how dare you talk to me that way? Haven't been unfair. Well, there was an agreement. There was a, a definite agreement uh, made at the beginning of the day. You guys would get your daily wage, just like I promised. So there was no problem there. So didn't you agree to work all day, the foreman says, for the usual wage? Take your money and go. I wanted to pay this last worker the same as you. Is it against the law for me to do what I want with my money? Should you be jealous because I am kind to others? So those who are last now will be first then, and those who are first will be last. And we see here, like, it's kind of like, the law. this is a picture of the law and grace. 
the law, you get what you deserve, right? If you do this, good, you're going to get the good. If you do bad, you're going to get, as Pastor Chad says, beat. You're going to get bad. Well, this is grace. And these guys had an issue, these first hires had an issue with this guy showing his goodness to these people who they thought, these guys don't deserve this. And I saw this quote yesterday, the system of of law is easy to figure out. And for the most part, that's, I think, our natu- that's a natural bent, okay? Is it's, it's not difficult to figure out. You get what you deserve, right? It's built into our culture, our mindset, our workplace, whatever. You get what you deserve. Somebody gets punished, you do something wrong, you break the law, you're going to get what you deserve. But the system of grace is kind of foreign to our mind, just as we see here, it was foreign to these first hires. This did not make sense to them. Now they got what they were told they were going to get. Who cares? What business is it of theirs what the, the other people are getting? But that's just rotten thinking. That's rotten thinking. That's, that's envy. Some, some translations said they had an evil eye toward this landowner, an evil eye, or they were envious. Now, I think this, if I'm not mistaken, said there, were, there, were, there was a jealousy there. Now, jealousy is, I've heard it said this way, jealousy is like, I, I want what you got. I, I want, I'm, I'm coveting, or I want what you got. Envy is, I want what you got, and I don't want you to have what you got. I don't want you to have it. And that's even worse. And they had an envious Um, kind of thing here. Because they didn't want these guys to have what they were getting. They were getting the same thing. So the system of grace is formed. God deals with us according to who He is, not according to who we are or what we've done. Thank God for that. So His goodness is based on, who His love for us is based on who He is. It, we, we know, and again, I'm, we're at Carrots of Testament Church here. This is, we've heard a few things about grace here. And this is, uh, you know, I could say this is preaching to the choir, but this is something we've got, we got to realize, that it's any little bit of blessing, any little bit of goodness, any little bit of grace that we experience, which we're drowning in an ocean of it, is because of His goodness. It's because of who He is we got to remind ourselves it's not anything we've done. These guys that worked a little bit less than the other first guys, naturally, they didn't earn that, but it was because of the goodness of this landowner that they received the same payment. And that's good. So that's, a good, that's good news, right? It's good news when we get what we don't deserve, right? That's, that's grace in a, in a nutshell. And we like, we like grace. We like to see grace manifested when we're the recipients. That's exciting. It's good. But, but then we watch, watch out if things get unfair. Wait a minute. Grace is unfair. And we're recipients of it all the time. Like I said, we're, we're drowning in an ocean of grace. If I may use a lyric from a song. Grace is very unfair. Jesus is grace. Grace died on a cross for a bunch of enemies. Love died on a cross. Grace was displayed on a cross. The punishment for sin was taken on someone who never sinned. And given to a bunch of people that don't deserve it. Offered to a bunch of people that don't deserve it. Enemies. Grace is very unfair. I'm glad I didn't get paid according to merit on this one. (laughs) Because how many know what we deserved? I I won't go down that road too far, but... When grace was revealed in this parable, 
It exposed the, some people's hearts. It exposed what was really in their heart. They had an evil eye. Some, like I said, some translations said they... No, no. They were actually judging the landowner. How dare you? How dare you show goodness to these people that don't deserve it? Who are these first hires? Who do they think they are? Trying to tell this guy what he can do with his money and who he can be a blessing to. But it exposed some hearts here. And one heart that it exposed was the goodness of the landowner. He, I mean, if you kind of tear this apart and go down the rabbit hole of this and think about this, you know, like I said earlier, this was kind of a normal part of the culture where they'd get hired for a day and they get paid a daily wage. How many knows that, doesn't, that didn't say, we, I didn't say weekly wage. Every day they had to get rehired and get another job or, or you know, earn one more day's pay, which um, afforded food for their families. That's good, right? That's good that this landowner was generous enough and displayed grace like this. He was providing for who knows how many families here, even though they really didn't deserve it, according to the first hires. But his heart of goodness and compassion is revealed in this. Do you think the late, the people who were hired later, the, the 9 o'clock crew, the 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 5 o'clock, do you think that they were uncomfortable when the money was being handed out? I, I mean, I can only see through my own eyes and my own personality, um, you know, weakness-wise, um, I'm a, I, I uh, battle with people-pleasing. I wonder if I would just, oh, I don't deserve this here. You can have it. She wouldn't let that happen. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, uh, but that would be uncomfortable. I wonder how they, these workers felt. Like, and again, that's probably where it got super awkward. Like, oh. But they were, the first hires weren't paid yet, so at the time they were getting dealt this money out, nothing was really being said yet until those first hires got their daily denarius, and then it all, as they say, hit the fan. So, you know, my guess is they were the later hires that got the same pay. They were probably merit-minded too, thinking, what did we do to deserve this? Like, this is, this is kind of crazy. Like, but good, right? And I started just pondering on this, and I thought, you know, we're not done yet, but after all this is said and done, what kind of a reputation, if he didn't already have one, maybe he didn't, I don't know, maybe the guy was new in town, this vineyard owner, but what, what kind of a reputation do you think this, this uh, employer had af after this? Do you think word got out? Yes. I think word got out, and they were like, I'll work for that guy, especially if he calls me at five. I might just show up at five. <laughs> I mean, it might, might, have, might have differed from day to day. Who knows how, how he did that. But, um, but I'll bet he had a really, really, really good reputation. And I'll bet even the first people that were hired after it was all said and done, after they had their little protest and their little pouting match and told him what they thought, they probably thought, you know what? What if I was one of those other guys? Would I, would I be ticked off about this? Actually, it's, it's pretty cool, you know? We don't know that, but that's, that's the freedom we have. We can think about this stuff. But I'll bet, that, I'll bet that landowner had a super good reputation. And our God has a, a great reputation. And people who the Holy Spirit reveals their need for a Savior, their need for, or exposes grace to them. Our God is famous. He is love. And I want the world, we want the world to see that, that He is good. And we need to be quick to share that, that you know what? 
I have some great news. I didn't, I didn't get what I deserve. I got something crazy. You're not going to believe this, but listen up. And then just share your story. Share your heart of a Savior that became one of us, paid it all for us, passed our test, gave us the A, lavished His love and continues to lavish His love and His grace on us. May we all be a manifestation of that to those around us. Throughout the Scripture, somebody um, I was listening to kind of just kind of pointed this out generally. All throughout the Scripture, we see um, stories of warnings and examples. What to do, what not to do throughout Scripture. And this parable is a great opportunity to to kind of review and reflect on just the different people involved here. We see, definitely we see um, the first hires in this day, they were kind of showing what, what not to do, right? With their, the way their, their attitude was. And um, I just get, kind of started going down this road. And if your story was in the Bible, would, would we be reading a warning? Don't do what this, this guy did. Or would we be reading an example of what, what we should be doing or what, how we should be acting or, or whatever. And, and uh, I thought that was an interesting, an interesting thing to ponder on a little bit. Like if my story, I remember there was a song by a group back in the, it was pretty big in the 90s, a Christian group, and one of their songs um, was titled uh, A Man You Would Write About. And I always thought that was a cool song. Like their heart was like, I want to be a man that you would write about in your word that people would read for you know, years and decades and millennia down the road that I was one who, who showed your goodness, revealed your goodness in their life and wasn't ashamed of you. And um, that's kind of what, I mean, I think that's really all of our heart. Uh, but what could have those first hires done differently? And I kind of started thinking about that. And, and again, they were kind of showing, displaying what, what not to do in this situation, how not to... How not to uh, respond or behave. But 2 Corinthians 10, 12 says, it's unwise to compare ourselves among ourselves, right? So they were in the comparison game and uh, comparing yourself, uh, kids, to other kids uh, is going to make you miserable. Um, just to be real, right? We, as long as you compare yourself to somebody else who's got more than you, better job than you, whatever, better spouse than you, don't do that. Uh, nobody has a better spouse than me. So don't uh, try that one. But uh, it leads you down a road of misery. It really does. And it's unwise, it says in 2 Corinthians 10, 12. Philippians 2, 14 says, do everything without complaining or arguing. And that's exactly what these guys did. Even though they were promised a day's wage, that was the agreement, first thing, they still complained. Hey, no, it's fine. We got our day's wage, great, but these guys don't. We, we want to take control here. They were complaining. In Romans 12, 15, this is a hard one, but this is something I've been um, learning over the years, and I, I really, it's just a matter of choice. But Romans 10, or 12, 15 says, Rejoice with those who rejoice. Can we do that? Can we rejoice with those who rejoice? Maybe you've, I'm using this with the assumption that you know what I'm kind of saying here, but uh, maybe you've sown a lot of seed, a lot of financial seed in your life and sown some seed for a new this or a new that, or I know I want a house. I'm sowing some house seed. I'm sowing some car seed. And then you see a brother or sister in Christ driving in the parking lot with a brand new car. And you're like, what about me? I've been sowing seed for years and I ain't seen nothing. And uh, they don't deserve that. I've done more than them. I'm better than them, blah, 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 blah. Instead of being able to rejoice with them in that. And really, it's a matter, whether you feel like it or not, I dare you to do it. Start doing it. You see somebody move into a new house, and you want a new house, you hate your house, and you want to move somewhere else, and they're living right where you want to live, or whatever it is, rejoice with them. Rejoice with them. Start cultivating a heart of gratitude and pure joy to share in others' joy. Because what if the tables were turn, turned? You would want them to be excited for you, right? You would want them to rejoice with you. 
And um, that's, that's an opportunity. These, these guys, could, these first hires could have been like, man, that is so cool. You guys worked like an hour and you got the same pay as us. This guy is awesome, right? That's not what we saw though. They didn't focus on what was really, really on display here. And it's the, the goodness, the compassion, the grace, the love of this super generous guy. They were so focused on what these others didn't deserve. And that, again, comparison just leads you down to misery. And one last little point here. Maybe one last little point. Uh, John 21, 22. I remember this account where Peter was asking about John, the disciple whom Jesus loved. We, we've heard of this guy. And he's like, what about, what about this guy? He's asking Jesus. And Jesus is like, you know what? What if, what if he lives? What if he never dies? What if he lives till I come back? What is that to you? Follow me. Just follow me. This race isn't about comparison, competition. Your eyes on me, Peter. Don't worry about these other guys. If I wanted to, I could keep this one alive until I come back. It has no bearing on what I've called you to do. And really, that's it. We can get so caught up in what's going on with other people, what's going on with other people's races, what's going on with other people's journeys. And we're not even paying attention to our own journey and, and, and keeping our eyes focused on our Father and the source of all of our provision, the source of love, the source of joy, the source of peace, the source of comfort. And we can get so caught up with other things. But grace, in the end, grace revealed the heart and the compassion of this landowner. And that's what it's all about. It's all about keeping our eyes on the source of all goodness, the source of all love. And we should all be focused on magnifying God's goodness when we see someone else getting blessed. Maybe you don't think they deserve it. Maybe there's people in your life like, I cannot figure this guy out. How come he keeps getting this and, and I, get, I get nothing? What's up with that? Change your thinking. Remember where you were and where God's brought you from and to. How far has God brought you? I don't know all your stories, but God has brought you far. Even if it was yesterday that you, you realized that you, you needed a Savior. And you embrace that. Like Pastor Chad says, you became a new creation. He made you right. He put you in right standing with God, with His righteousness. That's enough to dance and sing and shout about for all of eternity. Because we did nothing right. We committed no righteousness. He committed no sin. And there is an exchange at the cross. His righteousness for our sin. And that's so good to get wrapped up in. At the very least, I heard this, a minister say, when you see somebody else getting blessed, like I use the example of a vehicle or whatever, it could be anything. But just look at it and go, you know what? Oh, that means the line is moving. I'm in the line. The line is moving. And I thought, that is, a great, that is a great way to look at that. The line is moving. I'm one step closer. My harvest day is coming. Thank you, Lord, for the harvest of, of the good seed I've sown on good ground. Even if it's just that. Even if you can just say that. Say that. And, you know, we all have opportunities to rejoice uh, with those who we think might not deserve it you know, for whatever reason. But get ready. God is bringing in a mighty, mighty end time harvest. It's been going on for quite a long time. But the fields are white for harvest. There's going to be people coming in these doors that don't look like they deserve much. Maybe to our natural eye. We're going to see people come in these doors. And we'll have an opportunity to see God's goodness bring restoration to their lives, bring healing to their lives, bring abundance, financial abundance, whatever it is. We've seen people come in these doors. They're on the verge of, literally on the verge of 
throwing it all away. And God just restoring their hearts, restoring their lives. And we've had opportunity to rejoice with them and to, and to focus on God's goodness, knowing that, you know what? It's, they didn't. They just heard about God's goodness. They saw God's goodness displayed years ago. Pastor Chad did a funeral for someone and a guy that was there. I'm not sure. I can't remember the relationship and all that, the, how it all hooked up, whatever, but he saw something in Pastor Chad that gave him hope. And then before you know it, the whole family was in here. God brought a lot of restoration, healing and stuff. But that's what it's all about. Just, just living before people and just continually pointing to His goodness in our lives. Even if maybe we feel like we don't have you know, much to say. Let's not forget salvation, people. Maybe the heart, our heart's cry should be, Lord, restore unto me the joy of my salvation. Restore unto me the joy of my salvation. We need to look like we're saved. <laughs> really, just a smile on our face. Hey, I'm guilty, man. I'm guilty. I don't look like I'm saved. I look like I need to get saved sometime, every day. This guy needs to get saved. But... Uh, Let's not forget the goodness of our God, of our, of our Father. And I'm, I didn't, you know, bring up this message to say, you guys don't, you guys are like these rotten first hires, always thinking you're better and whatever. No, obviously I'm not, but it's just a reminder for us and all those in Facebook Live land, but to remember the goodness of our God and that we didn't get what we deserve. We got all of God's goodness. And we continue to live in that and dwell in that and drown in that grace. May we never, never, never lose sight of that, that we got what we didn't deserve. Amen? Amen. I can go on and on and on, but I'm going to stop. How about that? So let's, uh, let's close in prayer, and uh, we'll be dismissed. Father, we just thank you for your goodness. You, it could be said a million times and it, it would never get old, but you have displayed love on a cross. We have truly, truly, truly been given what we don't deserve. And may we never, ever, 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 for any moment, ever forget that. Help us to see others through your eyes. Lord, we ask for your heart for people. For we know that God so loved the world that he gave. It doesn't say God so loved good little boys and girls who go to church. No. God so loved, so loved the world. And at that moment, we were just a bunch of enemies who didn't deserve anything but you chose to become one of us to redeem all of us with the blood of Jesus. May we never, ever, ever take that for granted, Lord. Help us to see through your eyes, to think the way you think and to have hearts of compassion the way you have a heart of compassion, Lord. You have given us new hearts. Help us, Lord, just to wake up and to be bold and outrageous in displaying your goodness in our lives and never hold back to proclaim and make you famous. You are love. You are good. You are peace. You are joy. You are all that we need. And everything that we need is in us, in Christ Jesus. May we never stop reminding ourselves and others everything in us that is good in Christ Jesus. And I just pray a blessing over each and every person here today in the sound of my voice. Wake us up. Awaken us, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
You've been listening to a message from Karis New Testament Church. For more information or to contact us, go to www.karisntc.org. And remember, you are deeply loved, highly favored, and destined to reign in Christ Jesus.